Hey, welcome to Lead a Life Uncommon. This is Mary Bicknell, former psychotherapist turned badass success coach for women entrepreneurs who are ready to bust through any average, anything common, and finally create a life and a business where you can do whatever the hell you want to do whenever you want to do it. Ready? Let's go. Hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome to Lead a Life Uncommon. I have a special guest with me today that I met and I feel like, why didn't we meet before? We met actually in a, a circle of um, inside a program. And, you know, sometimes you get to meet people and then sometimes you meet them after. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that we got a chance to meet because finally I am drawing into my world and sharing with you women who are go-getters and non-bullshitters. And, and we hit record because I was like, let's continue this on recording I'm about not having to pet everyone. So Evelyn, thank you so much for being here. And um, we're going to talk business today, but we're also going to talk personal development. So because she's got a, you know, she's got her story and yeah, you know, also, you know, we've all got a story. And we can all lean on our story or, you know, we can pour, as she says, our big girl panties up. So I've got your bio here, but, you know, I can read your bio. bio. So you've really been, here's the thing that I love about it. And then I, I want you to also speak to, right. Okay. Is that when I'm reading your official bio, which um, started working in early childhood education, 25 years ago, had every position in, in preschool mm-hmm. and childcare, you owned multiple centers, built them from the ground up, you bought one. And ultimately you recognize that, um, you were done playing in the, everybody swims in the same pool. Yes. That you wanted to create something unique, something different, something elevated. Yes. And you, and, and part of the pool, I'll just say, right. As educator in that arena is not dissimilar to other industries that are teachery helper people as a clinician, right. You know, as a psychologist, yes. like, Oh, we love to help people. We love to help people. And that, which, which is their code for freaking, I don't want to make any money. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And I don't want to be big. Do the work. Right. And, and and I am going to fall on my sword by saying, I would just want to help people and, and, you know, but help some damn people in your house, help some help yourself. Okay. Yeah. So I know we can have that conversation (laughs) and you can just get to, so tell me a little bit about, um, I, let's let's start with like what are some of the biggest lessons as a businesswoman you learned about giving yourself permission to be all in? Yes, I let's think one of that. the let's biggest just things jump right in. from what you're saying is you got to let go of industry standards sometimes. Mm. Industry standards. I, I watched in my industry, and it's happening right now as we speak. My industry standards are destroying my industry. They don't work in today's day and age, but I watch, and it's actually predicted that 60% of childcare centers will probably be out of business in the next two years across the United States and Canada. Right. Part of that is because they're so married to these industry standards and they're not ready to let them go. And everything is, well, this is how we've always done it. Well, this is how we've always done it. And I, years ago, I decided to break from that. And I looked around while we were going through the great recession and uh, I, there was five childcare centers within my uh, current vicinity. Right. And we were all doing okay. But then when the recession hit, I just saw them closing one by one. And I knew industry standards don't work anymore. We have to stop being married to this. And I completely re-innovated how I do things. And by the time everything cleared up, there was only two of us left. And wow. I, not only are there two, but I have a huge wait list. I've got people in line to work for me yes. and people constantly ask me why, which is why I became a childcare business coach yes. because I just have this new thing I did that I realized that, uh, you know, and I looked at other industries, what are they doing? What works? And just married it in with this industry that is so stuck in an outdated model. Okay. Let's break that down because I know somebody who's listening to you, they're like, I don't have a child care business. Mm -hmm. And that's not the lesson here. Wake up ladies, wake up. If you're listening. Well, I love what you said. Cause I say something similar, which I didn't even know you said is that I like to say, you know, for the clinicians is like, we are institutionalized. 
Yes. We are institutionalized in this box of like, if you make a hundred grand as a clinician, you're like, oh my God. And a hundred grand, as we know, ain't what it used to be. Now, what you said is industry standards. It's the similar Mm -hmm. talk, right? It's like leaders like us, successful women who have broken out of the box, broken the mold. Yep. That is, that's where success lies. And what you said is true that so many people are like, but yeah, but, but that's not how we do things. Well, do you want to be swimming in the, the public busy pool with all, you know, or do you want to create something that has the possibility like you did mm-hmm. and you have yes. that, that can be the leader, right? This is lead a life uncommon, which includes yourself and your business. It's right. not be average, be mediocre, be common. That's not the title of this podcast. Right. Right. So, so how fearful, like, you know, I know that. And so whether it's, the helping industries, whether it's childcare, whether it's mental health, whatever. This literally, because I, I consult with all industries, this is actually a common verbiage within yes. every industry. Whether mm-hmm. you're a realtor, well, why don't I can't really do that? Or I, what, whatever, I'm a chiropractor, can't really do that. I can't, with well, doctor, what a, an attorney, like it doesn't yeah. matter. It's just we, not how it's done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's every, every yeah. single industry has a, that's not how it's done checklist yep. that you are living by, right? Listeners, you're living by them. Stop, rip it up. So when you made the decision, Evelyn, to rip that up, I mean, what also went through your head? So part of it is because you're, you know, you're a pioneer and you're a leader. Mm-hmm. Was there any part of you that was like, uh oh, this, this, oh. Be- okay. <laughs> yes. And it, there still is. Right. I mean, right. whenever we go into this innovative new world, there's always that voice in here is like, but, 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 you know, yeah. I, and I think you just have to be willing and ready to fail. It may not work. That's okay. And then if it doesn't, I'll pick myself up and try something different. And I'm just going to keep trying until I find what works. And ironically, when you talk about clinicians, I actually have went to graduate school for neuropsychology and I come from, again, just that whole different frame of thinking. I was looking at the world around us and all of these people need so much help out there. Right. 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 And it dawned on me that part of the reason is because during those crucial first five years of life, where 90% of the brain is being formed and the executive brain functioning skills are being formed, we're not helping children develop that. So I thought to myself, okay, so what if we do kind of a backward psychology instead of working on what's broken? What if we help establish from the get-go and help these children basically give them the tools that later people are in therapy for, right? So I took my so degree true, so yes, true. Yes, so in good. neuroscience and I created my own curriculum model, basically, that was based on helping people later in life avoid therapy. And I know it's a lot more complex than that. And there's a lot more to it than that. But my curriculum model that I developed basically focuses on those the uh, executive brain functioning. And instead of like teaching these children and, and we still do teach the ABCs and one, two, threes, but my number one curriculum focus is those things that help people to be a successful adult. So I took the field of psychology and instead of like you were saying, going and help the broken and all this stuff, I'm like, well, why, why not just stop them from being broken in the first place? So again, it's just breaking the industry standard when it comes to the childcare world and the psychology world, marrying the two and just coming up with something totally new and different, which I now have an international audience listening to me and following my model. Love that. Love that. So when you decided to create the model, right? The thing that you wanted to teach and you made the decision that, you know, one way or the other, I'm going to do this and whether I fail or not, this is one of the things that when, whether it's designing a new business, elevating, adding additional revenue streams, those kind of things. I think the thing that ha- comes up with people is this concept of failure. What's your f- concept of failure? M- well, my concept of failure is that you really don't fail until you give up. Yeah. And I've always known, and I'll tell you in my career, I have faced bankruptcy twice and I got so close to bankruptcy that my main child care center that I still own to this day, I actually had an eviction notice on one day and I did, I actually made it past it to create a very good thriving business. But I always knew even when my husband, my mother, everybody thought I was done. I always knew that I wasn't done until I said I was done until I actually gave up. And so, yeah, I've had failures 
you know, here and there, but I always know overall, I don't fail until I quit. And that's what has kept me going. And then if I just don't quit, then I never really fail. I love that you said that because I think that, um, I think that sometimes what happens is, and I think that there's a difference too, between quitting Mm -hmm. and giving up, right? Cause sometimes we need, we need to quit something. Okay. So I look at it like the giving up, like I, you get like, if you give up on your goal, that's a fail, right? Yes. Yes. Um, and so I, here's the really important thing that I want to make sure I circle back so that everybody can hear, because this is where the rubber meets the road. Even when those people closest to you, your Mm -hmm. husband, your mother, they're like, I don't know. Are you sure you should still be doing this thing? I don't know. And you were just like all in on yourself. Yes. What was that as an experience? Because like that is an experience that most women fail, if you will, to give themselves because it's hard, you know, it's so hard. I, I mean, yeah. if, if like, and that's the thing people in our lives, they want to like rescue us and, and help take yeah. us. So you're not going to get hurt. However, when we're so sold on ourselves yeah. and our mission and we're committed to doing the work, even in the face of it's challenging, you got a damn eviction notice. Yeah. What was that like for you when the people closest to you were like, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea. It was really hard. And I did, I definitely felt alone in the world because my, my husband went so far as to tell me he was washing his hands of the fan of our business. Cause we were co-owners at the time. He actually came off the LLC, took himself off all the bank accounts and basically told me you're on your own. I'm done. And he even told me, I don't want to hear about it. If you're struggling, I don't want to hear about it. Find someone else to vent for too. And he just said, you need to stop. It's time for you to quit and shut your doors. And he literally just said, if you decide to keep going, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to be a part of it. I'm done. And then my mom agreed with him. And so it was very, very lonely, definitely. And it was very, um, just isolating to a certain extent, but I just knew I had to do it and I couldn't base my decision and I couldn't let them dictate what I was doing because I knew in the end I would resent them because I I always knew that if I just hung in there, I would figure it out. And I did. And very shortly afterwards I did. And I turned everything around. And of course, when I turned it into a very healthy six figure company, then suddenly it was like, Oh, we're so proud of you. You know? So I think for me, I always just stayed future focused and I would remind myself that this is just a season in my life right now. Every season passes. And if I just get past this season, success is inevitable, right? I just knew that if I don't give up and I keep the course, I'm going to make it eventually. I'll figure this out. And so when all those voices were coming out me telling me it's time you've tried, it's time to let it go. Uh, I just knew like, I can't. And I just really stayed kind of living in the future at that moment in my life. I had to stay future focused. And I just constantly reminded myself and would journal and everything like in five years. And, um, and I did the thing, you know, wrote a letter to thank myself. Right. And I did the, you know, just, well, thank you for not giving up when everybody wanted you to thank you for being strong. Thank you. And there was moments where I had to read that letter three, four times a day. Yeah. Just to keep going, but you have to find that strength from within you and you have to really just learn how to just lean on yourself and really just believe in yourself. That is the biggest part is just knowing in your heart that you're worth this and you can do it. I love that you say that. And so my question can't help, but circle back to, is this part of what you teach your children and the children and part of Mm -hmm. your curriculum, right? Yes. Yes. Resilience. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Like and all of us moms are like, well, give us one tip, right? Give it, well, what's one tip that we can tell our children, whether they're, you know, young, like you have the young kids, but it's still applicable. Like what is one thing that you teach and have your staff teach, you know, kids about resiliency? Well, the one thing that we do is we make children do things for themselves. That is huge. And it's something, and I'll give you a specific example. So when we're teaching a child to put their shoes on, that seems so simple, right? Just teaching them how to put their shoes on their foot. And so often I see a child will succeed at it. They get their shoes on their feet. They're super excited. They did it. This is a huge accomplishment, but then it's on the wrong feet. 
So the first thing that happens is the parent or the teacher tells them, oh, no, no, that's on the wrong foot here. Let me switch that for you. Right. And then they go and switch it and put it on the right feet. Well, the message you're sending to children in this is that, first of all, you're not celebrating their accomplishments. Their accomplishment means nothing. Secondly, you did all that work and you did it wrong anyway. So what we're teaching children is that they're not capable, that they're not good enough and that their efforts don't mean anything. And we're not helping to celebrate their accomplishments. Instead, we're focusing, and we do this in everything. They put their coats on backwards, whatever they're doing, they're holding the crayon wrong. We're constantly, oh no, that's not how you do it. And then we go and do it for them instead of letting them struggle through. So often children are struggling to open something and the parent will grab it from them, open it and just do it instead of letting them go through that struggle. And then when they accomplish it, we don't celebrate the win of the accomplishment. So that's where I would really just suggest stop doing everything for them. And even if they get it done imperfectly, yes, celebrate the fact that they got it done. Well, of course. And that's exactly what we have to do in business development. Yes, exactly. And, and the small things along the way, whether we put our shoes on, even if they're backward, mm-hmm. it might be the equivalent of like you did your first talk on a stage somewhere and maybe you forgot five bullet points. Nobody knows, but you, but you so, yes. like, but celebrate it. And I think we fail to do, and now I'm going to get stuck on the word fail today. I can just feel that. Right. So there's a lesson in there for me. I'm, I'm sure um, we, you know, we get stuck on the, the not celebrating unless it's this grand, you right. know, massive freaking, yeah. oh, it's, it's like, but here's the thing. I think when we get to the goal, it sometimes is like, wah, wah if it's, if we're waiting all along the way, because we're also on to the next goal. So this is why I believe it's important to celebrate even the smallest things Uh a lot of times and claim this as success. Plus we're reprogramming our thinking to stack more successes. Yes. And so we're proving to our brain, oh, you can do things successfully. Here's a laundry list of things instead of like, well, you never hit the big grand goal. Right. So it's along the way. Um, And so how do you personally celebrate your wins? Um, well, what I try to do is instead of focusing on the big picture all the time, yeah. I focus on the micro goals within the big picture. I, yeah. I'm really big on reverse engineering. I have to reverse yes. engineer everything. And so I take the big picture, break it down into many small things because a lot of times going back to what you're saying is people look at this big picture and if they didn't get every step perfect, they're beating themselves up for it. So instead you have to celebrate each piece of the puzzle that you did get right. And you have to really acknowledge it. And the ones that didn't, it's like, next time I'll do better. you got to look at those pieces as just lessons, not, uh, you know, instead of a, looking at it as a failure or saying you didn't do, or saying you did bad, just like, look at it as a lesson that next time when you do this again, just like you were saying with the bullet points, you know, overall the speech was great. Nobody knows where I messed up next time. I won't miss those. That's it. So just really focusing on, like you said, training your brain to focus on the positive instead of obsessing over the negative. Okay. That's really good. Here's one of the things like my, my brain just put this together. Okay. I want I want, I like, like everybody this, I think that this is really, I really want to hear what you have to say about this. So I'm going to circle back to the kids. What I heard you say is that with our children, mm-hmm. we swoop in because we're yes. focused on, they didn't exactly do it correctly. Yep. And so I would think that that's exactly what we're doing with ourselves. Yes. Yes. We're immediately like, oh, I didn't do that right. Oh, that's wrong. I, the bullet point, what, what have you. And it's like, how can you, how can we think about, you know, in a sense, and whether we want to call it reparenting ourselves or, you know, being our own best friend or whatever language that we want to, but like really catching ourselves more and more and more and more to right. a, how we're doing this with our kids and no matter what age our lover or whomever, you know, um, and with ourselves, it's these, it's like, it becomes habituated. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And one of the things that I do for that, because I used to be somebody who was trapped in a victim's mentality. And I used to be somebody who was really just trapped on beating myself up all the time. So I really had to force myself by coaching myself that every time I messed something up, for example, right? Uh, Like if I'm, I have a grant that I'm writing, but I messed up on this portion of it. 
I would obsess over, of course you messed that up. Of course you did. Right. And I would stop myself and literally say, no, stop it. Just because you made this mistake does not mean, of course you did. It does not mean that you always mess things up. Stop saying that to yourself. And it does take time to retrain your brain, but you have to stop and acknowledge that you're doing it. And, and you have to tell yourself no, and really redirect your thoughts. It's really about directing your thoughts where you want them to go instead of letting them just go on their own, basically. Yes. So you've had some tra- some significant life transitions over the last little while. Yeah. yeah. Some, some pretty significant ones. And, yes. and yet you're showing up here, upbeat, still like in your power, still strong, still, and, and, and maybe that's not even good words, right? Like sometimes we're like, you're so strong, you know, I don't I know. know. Sometimes yeah. people, sometimes people, we don't know what to say, or people don't know what yes. to say, or, yes. and that's fair. Right. And, and that's okay too. Right. And because the intention might be there, but, and yet, yeah, you know, there's a lot of words all around the, the reality that your husband passed away right? and you're a young woman. Yeah. And there's still plenty of life that, that you, um, think being future focused, I'm sure, or was thinking about with Mm -hmm. your spouse. Yes. Yeah. Now being future focused has been difficult for me right now. This is, I've hit a time in my life where being future focused doesn't serve me in the current season that I'm in. And my husband did pass away just five months ago and, uh, we were together since I was 15. Yeah. So I've never been without him my entire adult life. And basically the life I thought I was going to have is pretty much gone. So the picture I had painted for myself of my future is now gone. And it, it has been very, very hard. Now he was terminal for a couple of years. Uh, the last year I knew he had about a year to live. So I had a lot of time to prepare myself, uh, which I did uh, really intentionally get myself ready, put things in my business in place, And one of the things too, for everybody, for your listeners is, um, you never know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm young. I'm not very old. I I was with my husband from a very young age. And if you would have told me five years ago that I would be a widow at this point in my life, I would just, no way, no way we're going to grow old together, you know? So you can never, you've got to be prepared because you don't know what's going to happen in your life. So for me, future focus is so important. So I did plan for the future, but now after his passing, it's kind of different. And I do realize that like being future focused can kind of be really hard because now I have to completely reinvent the future. I thought I was going to live and what I I had pictured myself is now gone. And I know right before we started recording, we were talking and, um, about like just staying in that positive mindset, I had set it up so that I could take 10 to 12 weeks off everything in line. So my business, both of my businesses would be fine without me. And they were, and I found myself trapped in this cycle of telling myself, well, give yourself grace, give yourself grace, give yourself grace. But then things started happening that had a negative impact on my life. And I I had to have a coming to Jesus talk with myself. And I basically had to tell myself, okay, giving yourself grace now is just a cop out and it's an excuse. And I really had to tell myself, you have to choose where you're going to be a year from now. If you keep giving yourself grace, you're going to lose every year. Yeah. Nothing's going to be here. You're going to be broke. You're going to lose your employees. You're going to lose everything. You know, you were ready for 12 solid weeks off. Now they need you. Now it's time to basically, like I said, put your big girl pants on, stop giving yourself grace and start working through this and moving forward. And I just realized through that that I get to choose every morning how I'm going to show up. And I can either focus on how great my life with my husband was and the amazing memories we had and how wonderful my life is today, even without him. Or I can choose to focus on the fact that I lost the future I thought I was going to have. And so it takes a lot of intentionality again, but every day I have to remind myself to focus on what we have and the great life and the memories that we have and the children we have. And even though I lost my life partner that I, you know, I thought would be with me forever. My life is still so blessed. I still have so much more than so many people. And I just have to stay focused on that. I can't stay focused on the fact that I lost my husband. I have to stay focused on what I do have. Otherwise it does consume me. And even though I say there's still nights where I cry myself to sleep, of course, of course. 
But overall, I have to choose, especially when I need to show up during the day, I can't show up a hot mess, you know, right. And I have to choose what am I going to focus on? Who am I going to show up as today? And I have to remind myself that where I am a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now is all going to be determined on how I show up today and the mindset that I choose to be in moving forward. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, and of course I'm hearing also, you know, it's, um, a couple things, you know, we've talked about women, financial sovereignty, you know, here it is like so many times we think, oh, you know, we can lean on our partner for mm-hmm. income, um, yes. and those kind of things. And here you stood by yourself, like literally like stood with yourself to make sure that your businesses, even when your husband, when he was still alive was like, Oh no, don't, I, I'm done with that business. It's like, you did that also for you. Yes. It's like on one level, whether, you know, on one level, you did that because it's the belief in yourself. And that is part of what is also helping you today yes. is that you've, uh, that you've, I don't want to use the word mastered because that's probably not the most accurate, but you've already created this, um, you've already given to yourself this ability right to pause enough to think things differently yes. and to have this as part of your your habituation already and i think this goes back to a lot of women don't do that right. you know a lot of women don't do that they will say you know it's back to what you said actually a few minutes ago was before we even talked about your your husband passing away was choosing not to be in a victim state mhm yeah and with whether it's a passing of a spouse or whatever, yep, we have to make these choices for ourselves, no matter what. Yeah, that I choose to give to myself. I choose to believe in myself. I choose to. I I am able to think this and then feel this and then do the things that need to happen because just what you said, you never know, right? And so no, financial yeah. sovereignty yeah. for women of course, that's so much part of my business and my brand is helping women be financially independent. So we never have to rely on it. Right. Yeah. And you don't, and I can, I have two things on it. I was a stay at home mom. My husband made a very healthy six figure salary. He would have been fine and thrilled if I stayed a stay at home mom for the rest of our marriage together. And my oldest son is now 17. So I could still have been a stay at home mom. Exactly. But when I, when my, my oldest son was in kindergarten and I had one son that was five years old and my other son was an infant. And I remember going to my son's school one day and everybody was high Bronson's mom, the teachers, the kid, everybody in my life was high Bronson's mom. Yes. Then I went to my husband's work and it was high Ron's <laughs> wife. Right. And I left that day thinking I don't have a name. I mean, every person I had interacted in that day either knew me as mom or wife. Nobody knew my name. I had no personal identity. And it was a huge wake up call that I had to do something for me. Yes. And I needed, and at the time I wasn't thinking financially, I was just thinking one day my children are going to grow up and leave me. One day my husband, you know, is going to want to retire and I've got nothing of my yes. own. Yes. And yes, I yes, knew yes. I had to build something that was, and even if I was going to be a great mom and show up as a better wife. I had to nurture myself as well. And little did I know that that day and the decision to not be a stay at home mom any longer and to build a career, which I did start from home. So I was still able to be a mom at home and build my career from home. But little did I know that years later, uh, my husband actually has been sick for about five years. So he lost his income. I did not know way back then, you know, 15 years ago that our financials would be all on my shoulders. So had I had stayed in that space as a stay at home mom, I would probably be honestly working at Walmart or something today because I would not have pursued my career. I wouldn't have a career. I would be desperately looking for something just to get by. And so you just don't know, you don't know. So we do, I, I too am very passionate about making sure that women are financially independent yes. uh, and just have something of their own that they will be okay on their own. Right. Because we know, no one wants to think about oh, it. No. Right? I yep. mean, no, no one wants to like, Ugh. and here's the thing, right? It's like, uh, so for me, you are exemplifying exactly what I want for every woman is like, do the thing and blow your own mind. See what you're yes. made of for yourself, yes. huh? yeah. for yourself, you know? And I mean, there was a time that my husband, John was helping me in the business a little bit and look, I can't do it with him. I, he like, <laughs> 
We are not business partners because in my business, it's me, girl. It, I am me. I'm showing up like me. This is about Mary and me helping you and like crushing your goals. And like, but I don't, I like, I have a different hat on. I have a different part of my identity that shows up with my spouse. Exactly. Yes. And we tried to like, work together too. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work, you know? And, and I think that sometimes women forget that yeah. there's a part of you, no matter how much I love being a mom, I love mm-hmm. having time off. I love my two houses. I like walking the dog. I like, like whatever, all of the things I like, like there's a part of us that we have to hold on to. And that's the part of us that is crying from the inside saying, what the hell are you made of? Like there's yes. what happens along the road of life. Oh. We let that go. And this is right. why women, you know, their kids leave like rivers 15, your child is 17, your oldest kid. It's like, and then all of a sudden you're like, and then who the hell are you? You better like, right. Like, yes, yes about making money. Yes. Mm-hmm. About not having to hold your hand out and say, honey, can I have 50 bucks for your birthday present, please? But it's, it goes beyond that too. Like financial independence also comes from you seeing what the hell you're made of. Yes. Yeah. And you have to be in touch with the reality that you are going, you could very possibly well be alone one day. I, two years ago, I was with my family of four, right? I had my, my husband, my two boys and me. And now today I face a life where my oldest son is now graduated from college, moving on. He's buying his own house. My youngest is going to graduate from high school and talking about joining in the military. So within a nine month period, I'm going to be living with my family of four to being completely by myself. Wow. And we don't, as moms, especially when we're young moms, right? And our children are little, we think that's our life forever. But yes, it changes in the so blink good. of an eye. You so guys, good. I can't even tell you how I feel like it was just yesterday. Yes. I was my 22 year old was my three year old, right? In my arms. And now here I am today, and I know. By June, I'm going to be alone in this house that had four, my family of four living in that had you told me two years ago, even that I would be living by myself on my own. I would have just laughed at you like, no way my family, you know, and now here I am facing this life, but I'm ready for it. And I'm okay because I have established a life of my my own. So I'm so glad that I was blessed with that epiphany at a, you know, as a young mom that I had to have something for me. Cause I, if I hadn't, I would probably be facing poverty right now. And I would really be having a hard time transitioning into this life by myself. That is my no choice of my own. It's just, you know, what happened life. It, this is just the turn that my life naturally took. And so many women we're all going, our children are all going to leave us one day. It's natural. We yeah. want them. To. Yes. Right. But, and we don't know what's going to happen with our husbands. So it's just a natural progression in life that we should be thinking about through our lifespan. Yes. I couldn't agree. Right. It's all about, you know, I love working with women to help them with their identity. Right. And that's what you're shifting through right now is like a new identity without your, without your spouse, but also additionally with, you know, kids, boys. Yeah. All at once. Yeah. (laughs) Like, oh my God. And, 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 you know, the truth is it can be challenging and that's okay. You know, it, it, when we start, when we believe and we're leaning into who do I want to be and how can I show up and how can I do that work? Then I can have this life that I want to have and I, or I can recreate or I can all of those kind of things. It might not always be the the life I thought I was going to have, but when we're not in that victim posture, when we're taking full ownership. 100% responsibility for ourselves today as grown ass women to create the identity that we want and live that out to fruition. That's the, that's being a leader in our lives. And, and we are leaders, whether we claim it or not, I prefer when people claim it, like I'm leading the life that I want, I'm creating what I want. Then you, then through the hard times, you've at least got you. Right. And you have something to be excited for. And and that's something that's really hard for me to, to the message right now that I'm living through. That's really hard to explain where I mourn the life that I lost. I absolutely am really sad, but then there's some days that I'm super excited about the life in front of me because the sky is the limit. There's nobody 
that I have to basically make accommodations for at this point. And it's whatever I want it to be. So it's kind of that weird area that I'm in right now where I can be excited for the future, but I'm also really sad for the future I lost. But, you know, it's kind of funny because even just two months ago, when I had this conversation with people, I couldn't have it without just crying, knowing that I'm going through this transition. And like you were saying, it's just working through this is so key. And recognizing that you can have more than one emotion going on at the same time and and allowing yourself to validate that. Right. And not feel guilty. Right. That you are excited about your future. Right. Right. And not, not feeling ashamed. Like I should still be the grieving, you know, yes. Not pretending to be something I'm not exactly. And there's, yeah. And all the emotions you got to go through and realize that, um, but again, being really in touch with those emotions and allowing yourself to really just sit within yourself is where I've gotten to that point where I'm, I'm, I'm okay with these emotions and I'm okay yes. with, you know, not being what society tells me I should be right now. Yeah. So good. Yeah, <laughs> We could talk all day, you know, we right? could because there were so many juicy, helpful insights and tips and ahas in our conversation today. I'm going to end with asking you the question, how do you define allowing yourself to be bold enough to lead a life uncommon? Just being yourself. And really we can't care so much what society thinks to yes. a certain extent. And we can't allow ourselves to be a part of the group think we have mm-hmm. to think for ourselves. That's where, like I just said about being a widow, a lot of people would see me as a widow of five months thinking I should be showing up miserable every day, crying, upset. I shouldn't be excited about the life I may be living while I do mourn my husband. They, and that a lot of people still won't understand what I'm saying. Like, how could she be excited when she just lost her husband, right. but you can, and, and me being okay with that and embracing that. Yeah. Not everybody's going to understand me, but I don't need them to, I don't care. That's what's pretty. I think that is what the thing is. Just do what you need to do for you and stop caring what everybody else thinks and feels. So true. So true. And what's common is caring about everybody else. So yeah. I love that. I yes. love that. Um, how can people reach out to you if they want to reach out to you? Well, you can find me, of course, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, uh, on Instagram, I'm uh, the childcare business coach. Yes. You can always email me. My email is Evelyn at childcarebusinessprofessionals.com and Facebook Evelyn Knight. Uh, but if you Google Evelyn Knight childcare business coach, you'll find me. Perfect. Perfect. Evelyn, thank you for our conversation today. Thank you. I know we could talk all day. Yes. Everybody enjoy the rest of the day. I know that you, you got a lot out of this and we'll talk again. Bye. Okay. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to Lead a Life Uncommon. I am so excited and pumped out of my mind for you. My job, my goal, my mission is to help you create the life that allows you to jump out of bed every single morning. And I know a lot of it comes from your thinking. I want to give you a little something. Head over to marybicknell.com slash podcast. I want to give you the guide to your hidden thoughts about money and success. Inside, you're going to get some ahas about what might be holding you back from creating all the financial abundance that you want. We'll talk soon. Bye now.